Well, the, um, uh, I've been working closely for the past three years with, um, with Cardinal McElroy. Uh, he was elected as the, uh, the chair of the California Catholic Conference. And uh, unfortunately, I was away for that meeting. And uh, so I was elected the secretary of, <laughs> of the executive. So uh, uh, Bishop Van was the, the vice chair. Um, so the three of us have been working quite closely the past three years. And uh, so it's been an opportunity to, to get to know Cardinal McElroy much better, to work closely with him and to see his, his decision-making, his thought process, and his leadership skills. Um, one of the things that has impressed me tremendously uh, about Cardinal McElroy is his ability to uh, pull forth those who are remain quiet uh, in the room and to elicit their uh, their thoughts, uh, their their perspective, and that brings an entirely new light into the room, uh, the room of decision making. And I really think that's part of the the synodal process. And so um, I think that that is something that Colonel McElroy has embodied. Uh, even before all of the talk about synodality in recent years. Um, so it's been a pleasure to get to know him uh, uh, more intimately on a personal level. And um, I think he's, he's been a tremendous leader, even when uh, opinions arise that he disagrees with. Um, he respects them utterly. He lets them stand on their, on their own ground, uh, expresses his, his concerns, but respects them utterly. And that's that's what I take away from my working with Cardinal McElroy. Mm -hmm. um, so Cardinal McElroy is, 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 an, is an intellectual as well as a pastoral leader. And so I guess the question, may, and again, to be on extra and not intro, uh, how important is his specific intellectual contribution to the life of the church? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, and my first encounter with Cardinal McElroy was not as, as as a pastor, but as a scholar. You know, we were talking about the same books, um, and my favorite incident is he was responding at one point five years ago to a book I'd written that dealt with the Puritans. So you had two Catholics, you know, a bishop and a lay woman sitting around arguing about Cotton Mather and the other Puritans. Um, so it was just sort of an interesting, like, this is America uh, moment uh, for me. But he's extremely um, intellectual. He knows the tradition. He knows John Courtney Murray. At the same time, I think the most important thing he shows is that you can be very, very smart, but that doesn't mean you cannot be equally pastoral. He takes his intellectual gifts and he uses them as pastoral. And one of the big divisions in the church right now is the sense, well, here's the teaching over here, and here are the people over there, and the twain shall never meet. He is someone who says, no, they can meet, and the mind has to be used in service of of the heart and of the commitment to the people of God. When I first met uh, Cardinal McElroy, I was, um, uh, I was actually the administrator of the Archdiocese of, of San Antonio. Uh, Archbishop Gomez had already been transferred to Los Angeles. Um, and um, Cardinal McElroy had just been named a bishop, uh, uh, auxiliary bishop, and he came to San Antonio to do an intensive workshop on, on, on Spanish. And um, so uh, I, I saw his appointment and uh, did a, uh, some initial reading about him, and it was very fascinated that his, his work on John Courtney Murray. I had a, a particular interest in John Courtney Murray's work. And so um, I invited him to, to dinner, and uh, so we had a, a, a wonderful conversation um, on, on, on the church, on uh, uh, the, the, the church's Catholic social teaching. Um, and uh, and, and that, that was sort of the background, actually, but we just began a friendship, and I, I was impressed with his, um, uh, let's not talk shop, let's just get to know each other, and I appreciated that. Um, but certainly his, um, 
there's interventions um, at the USCCD as well as the, the, the California conference. Um, his, um, his ability to shift the focus of uh, the center of gravity of the conversation um, has been tremendous. And whether you agree with him or not, you can appreciate uh, his ability to articulate it and his ability to, to see the distinctions and to present a different point of view. Uh, I think particularly he has been a steadfast uh, uh, supporter of the vision and the language and uh, the pastoral care of Pope Francis, uh, who has not always been easy to understand because Pope Francis speaks in his own language. Um, and I think that uh, Cardinal McElroy has certainly his own take on, on what uh, Pope Francis has been trying to do over the past several years. Um, but I think it's, it's been appreciated, I have appreciated it, um, his ability to articulate uh, sort of a shift in a center of gravity. Yeah, the thing that struck me is he's, uh, this is Cardinal McElroy's very fine book, The Search for an American Public Theology, The Contribution of John Courtney Murray. And he really brings out aspects of Murray that I think we need to retrieve. Not I mean, all aspects of Murray are important, but at the end of the book, he talks about McElroy's, excuse me, uh, about Murray's critique of of, of, of the hegemony of technology, we're being taken over by technology. Of the 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 risks of you know of capitalism and ch and chasing money uh, to our uh, to our democratic republic, as well as and this was interesting, the loss of kind of a moral center in the sense that we're. Uh, uh, Murray predicted that we would have this vociferous discussion, that we'd all be going our own separate ways and we couldn't talk together. And, and, and he, uh, McElroy, thought that it was very important to retrieve the sense that Murray had that we have a common vision of a, of a political community and retrieve a way of talking to ourselves. And I found that really prescient because this book was written, published what year? Um, 89, that's a while ago. The culture wars hadn't gotten really hot, but he's predicting what will happen if we don't try to find a, a common respect and a common ground. Yeah, just to just to add a word to that, that, um, you know, that's interesting. I, I, I read through, through that book. Uh, I did remember that it was from 89. I mean, that's, yeah, exactly. That was before all of yeah. the, uh, the, 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 the polarization began uh, in our society. But um, uh, yeah, so the, 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 uh, Cardinal McElroy's ability to, uh, to dialogue with people, I think he embodied, has embodied Fratelli Tutti mm -hmm. before ever um, those thoughts came to the mind of Pope Francis. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he brings to the dialogue. This, and this will be a little bit narrow, but it will follow up, I think, is this issue, you know, Vatican II calls the Episcopal Institute affective collegiality. And the other day, in an interview with our colleague Chris White, uh, Bob talked about the need to have affective fidelity to the Holy Father. So I think if, and it kind of touches on what both of you were just coming from at different points about how Americans at this point in time, tend to think of the faith as a kind of notional thing, like believe these five things and you're a good Catholic and if you don't, you know, that, that. where is this, there's this affective part of it. And and can you just talk about that as, as you know, not just the vision of Pope Francis, but also coming from Vatican II, that, that attending to the affective collegiality and fidelity. Uh, oh, go ahead. Please. Well, I think it's it's sort of an interesting thing because when Catholics think of faith, more generally, it's faith in certain dogma, faith in propositions. And, and so, you know, as you said, you believe these five things, but there's also faith understood as trust, as commitment, as love, and some of that's more 
you know, um, out of the Protestant tradition, actually. It's still in the Catholic tradition, but we have retrieved since the Second Vatican Council the notion of faith as trust in a loving God. Not that it wasn't there, it was just in the background. And I think that that's something that uh, Cardinal McElroy is, is, is very concerned about, and the Pope is very concerned about. Not just do you, can you check the box, but do you believe in, the, in, in, in God's love and tenderness and, uh, and, and, and Jesus' saving self-offering? And do you believe in Jesus? Not just do you believe the proposition that Jesus, uh, you know, is the, is, is the son of the Father. Yeah, that's, that's beautifully said, thank you. Um, I, I was just thinking about the way that uh, Cardinal McElroy uh, treats individuals, um, myself included. When I came to, to California um, four years ago, he reached out to me. Um, we didn't know each other terribly well, um, but really welcomed me to the, to the conference and, and to the state. And, um, and he's done so uh, ever since. And, uh, and I really appreciated that. Just, uh, before we understood each other's positions, uh, each other's backgrounds, and, and so forth. And um, I think what, what you just mentioned about embracing the person, the person of Jesus Christ, um, and, and, and then from there, the propositions that come forth from the gospel, um, uh, in, in a sense, he does that to individuals, that he embraces you as a human being, as a person created by God, and loved by God, and then he begins to understand you, uh, rather than from the nuances beginning from your positions. Um, and so I, I think that that um, uh, he does that with individuals, he does that with cultures, he does that with a global community. And so um, I, I think that speaks to that um, uh, that fraternal affectivity. That, that we're called to, not just with the Holy Father, but with one another. 